Good morning, everyone. Sheepdog Smokey here, and we have some good news today. Antifa goon who assaulted pro-Trump reporter sent to jail. A violent member of Antifa has been sent to jail for his assault on one American news reporter, Jack Kosobiec, in D.C. last year. Jack, I really hope I said your name right. I do remember the uh, competition on to mispronounce it, but I don't do that. Uh, you can see here there's a link to the status. We'll have some more below. Sidney Ramsey Larry, 25, was originally sentenced to two years of probation for the assault, but was arrested yet again for public intoxication in December. The popular right wing reporter was on a corner speaking to members of Antifa when Ramsey Larry punched him. Police immediately rushed to the scene and arrested him. The man immediately claimed self defense, but it was easily disproven by Posobiec's video. We've been working the case quietly through the slow moving DC legal system and now are able to announce this result. He is behind bars. Originally, he was given two years probation, but he got arrested again for public intox and broke probation, ran from officers too. And you can see here the statement that uh, Jack tweeted out. When the officer attempted to apprehend Ramsey Larry for drinking in public, the violent anarchist ran from police. As I approached the males, they turned and looked at me and took off running. I yelled, stop, police, the police report explained. One male, later identified as Sidney A. Ramsey Larry, from his VA learn Virginia learner's permit, learner's permit, so he's underage too, jumped down from the plaza onto the sidewalk, holding what he was drinking in his hand. On, once on the sidewalk, I observed him throw to the ground a can of what I immediately identified as Budweiser. The officer reportedly yelled at him to stop once again, but Ramsey Larry bolted across Pennsylvania Avenue and entered an active construction zone and hid under an active large construction crane. The officer fell as he attempted to jump over the fence to apprehend him, then became caught in a wire under the crane. Eventually, he turned to the officer who grabbed his arm, but continued to resist arrest. A pipe to smoke marijuana was also found in one of his pockets. This is a message to all Antifa everywhere. When you resort to violence to attack the First Amendment, you will face law and order, Posobiec told the Gateway Pundit. We will arrange a meeting with you and the United States Federal Penitentiary System. Ramsey Lurie is now serving 60 days in jail. Now, I've mentioned before that I did work as a detention officer for about a year. I learned real, real quick, I am not law enforcement material. I'm a firefighter. Just a part of life. It's two different mindsets. And I am a great supporter of law enforcement. I'm just not one of you. But, I do apologize for this. Allergy season is kicking in. But this is a classic story that we've been seeing for over over two years now, uh, almost full three years. Antifa goons, or as I call them, cowards in masks, assault anyone they want because they are threatened by words. These are people so moronic that they actually believe they can punch you in the face and then claim, well, it was self-defense. He was, he was speaking hate speech. They want to control everything. They, of course, claim they are anti-fascist. They use the exact artwork from the Anti-Fascist League, which was in Nazi Germany. Look up the Anti-Fascist League from 1939 to 1945 under Hitler's rule. They were doing the same thing. Anyone who was speaking out against Hitler's rule was deemed a fascist by the fascist leader. Now, modern-day Antifa used fascist tactics fear, assault, and more to silence all dissent. I've watched many videos with Jack, with Candace Owens, and with many others. They never become violent, yet they are faced with violence regularly. Candace just recently was harassed and threatened by a large group of white liberals on UPenn's campus. Yet they claim she is the racist, she is the white supremacist, as they threaten her to silence her. People claim Jack is a violent fascist while they threaten him with violence to silence him. It is one of the many tactics of fascist regimes throughout history. Silence all dissent. Do not allow disagreement with the party. Everything must be as the rulers declare. The only real difference we see now is the fascists are trying to overthrow the modern-day uh, rules by being not associated with the government, although I still would not be surprised to find out they're being funded by large Democrat organizations. 
That's the only difference they have today is they are not part of the government. They are trying to overthrow the government to make themselves into the government party. If you speak out against them, you are reported for hate speech. You are reported for threatening them. You triggered them. But if they attack you, it's merely defense. And this idiocy, this crap, must stop. And honestly, I don't know where it will, because we have so much crap going on in the world that there's almost no time to deal with any of it. A case in point. We have here that a Lyft passenger, and I'm sorry, this is, I'm going to see if I can drag this on the screen. Lyft passenger blames structural fat phobia for seatbelt not fitting. This one explains itself. Imagine being so delusional that you're so obese a seatbelt doesn't fit you, yet you find some way to blame society. Every day we stray further from God's light, but we don't. Many do. You can see here, of course, the idiot is staying anonymous. Progressive dialogue is so fascinating. You literally just plug buzzwords together to look like you know what you're talking about. It takes a special kind of delusion, and I am sorry, this is not the idiot. This is another person remaining anonymous and replying to it. It takes a special kind of delusion to convert the shame being experienced from not being able to f use a seatbelt designed for average to large-framed human beings into systemic oppression. Pretty convenient. If it's systemic, then it's totally not your fault, and you can stay sedentary while eating your emotions every day. Embarrassing moments and structural fat phobia. The seatbelt in my Lyft pool driver's brand new car didn't fit me. Uh, brand new? That don't look brand new to me. So all four of us drove the entire 10-minute trip with beep, beep, beep. This is along the same delusion. The delusion that tells these thugs they can assault you because they don't like the words you're speaking tells the morbidly obese it is the automaker's fault that the seatbelt does not fit someone who is morbidly obese. Of course, we also see people arguing with certified dietitians, with personal trainers, and with doctors, and accusing them of discrimination when they tell these people, your heart will give out. You will die from your obesity if you do not lose weight. Then they say, well, you're fat shaming me. And given enough time, I will not be surprised to see a morbidly obese person. And let's just put it in context. Someone who is 5'6 and 500 pounds. When that person sues the doctor for triggering them, for hate speech, for discrimination, for shaming, and wins, getting the medical doctor to lose their license, just shortly down the road when that person dies from everything the doctor said would happen, their family will sue the doctor for not doing enough. This is the same mentality where the Antifa goons who attack people sue the government, police in particular, or at least try to or talk about it, when during their riot, it takes a taser or a pepper ball to the balls to subdue a violent thug so they can be safely arrested. We literally have people who will demand that you obey them until their rules get them hurt, and then you should have disobeyed me and stopped me. We literally have a world full of mental toddlers, and it's only going to get worse and worse and worse until they are forcibly taught the lesson that they are not in charge. They are a citizen like the rest of the country, and they must follow every law that is imposed on the citizens or have it changed. Personally, I don't know that I have the patience of a saint like Jack or Candace does, or that Lyft driver. I would have told uh, Shamu to get out of my car and contact a people mover. I would have had this thug by the throat or at least in a bent armbar with one of my fingers digging into his clavicle notch until the police arrived. <clears throat> and I would have said, I am pressing assault charges. I'm not letting you get this idiot probation. Because Jack had a video, and it proved that the idiot was not defending themselves against anything except being so infantile that they can't accept that people think differently than them. But I've talked about this one long enough. Let me know what you think. Make sure to keep the comments civil. And remember, we don't learn from argument. We learn from debate. 
Also, make sure to like and share so we can expand all the conversation. And please remember to subscribe and activate notifications so you're one of the first to know about anything posted as it is. Until next time, everyone have a wonderful day.